Yes, indeed. It is time for a brand new episode of the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. If you're keeping score at home, this is episode 110. We want to welcome all the folks who are watching live on YouTube. We always enjoy the chat. Sometimes we don't get to the comments, but we're snickering about them, uh, reading some of the crazy mm. stuff. These guys are fighting back and forth, talking about their high school uh, glory days and stuff. It's crazy. It's, it's over, guys. Let it go. <laughs> yeah, let it Just go. let it go. <laughs> don't, don't be that guy walking around with your high school letterman <laughs> jacket on when you're 50 years yeah. old. Let it go. Talking about a sophomore baseball yeah. game. You know, remember like, when I remember on the on the freshman B team, <laughs> I, I got a home run. Okay, just I let owed it go. you. Yeah, yeah. Let it go. Hey, last week we uh, we teased a special announcement coming up, and uh, unfortunately our news has already been broken on other outlets. But it's still an important occasion to yes. celebrate. We are going taking the show to a new level. We have partnered with Odyssey and Twenty Four Hundred Sports. They are the biggest audio content distributor in America, and they are now going to feature Stacy King's "Give Me the Hot Sauce" podcast on all their platforms locally. Uh, 670 The Score, Mitch Rosen is going to promote us. We're going to be doing appearances on their on-air shows to, to promote the show. And, Stacy, I think the great thing about this is we're going from a show that had a, a loyal following. We're, we're blowing up. We're going big time now. Yeah, you know what? Just to, to piggyback on that, Mark, you know, when we first started this out, you know, we, we started this journey. We didn't know where it was going to go. Yeah. We didn't know we didn't know what the microphones we needed. We didn't know all the technical stuff. And and then, you know, we, we, we got it all together. A couple of times we sound like we were in a broom closet when we first started. <laughs> but we didn't quit. You know, we kept, you know, we kept grinding and kept doing all the things that we did. And we got it to over 100 episodes, which a lot of podcasts don't get to, you know, because of whatever reason. Uh, the content has always been fresh. And one thing about this show, uh, if you've never watched it or you only watched it one time, uh, you're always going to laugh. You're going to oh, laugh absolutely. out. You're always going to laugh out loud when you watch this show. Uh, and we also have great guests. We have a lot of interesting guests. And it's not all about sports all the time. Even though it's a sports podcast show, uh, we have a lot of different topics that we talk about. And I think that's what kind of separates us a little bit from everybody else. Uh, not saying we're the best. Shout out to our fans, yes. seriously, because without you, this would not be possible. We have grown each and every week. Uh, you guys are loyal listeners who, who come in and they listen to the show every week. We hear you on, t uh, on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, none of this would be possible without you guys. Um, you make us, you know, make it. It's a joy for me to come in here every week and Mark and Tim to come in here every week with the Sriracha crew uh, to come in here and work. And uh, I have so much fun. Like, I have fun doing Bulls games, but I have so much fun doing this podcast and then you know to be able to to work with odyssey um you know that's that's going to be a lot of fun they're going to yeah. take us to a different level um you know we're already on youtube and you know we advanced we've advanced slowly we went from just being an audio to now we're you know actually on video oh, we Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We went. <laughs> we went from. We went from uh, Don Juan Gold Mics to you know the the Snoop Doggy Gold Mics to now look at this. Look at and now mics. Snoop's in studio with yeah, us. Yeah. Then we got Snoop right yeah. here with the headset. Um, but it, it's it's been it's been a fun fun ride. Every step of the way has not even felt like work. You know we we've you know we've hit some snags here and there. Um, shout out to my 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 kids at Harper. Uh, you know, we got Matty Isis that does the, the social media. He's sitting in the back. Uh, Dangerous D over here with the, the white headset. We can get all these guys on go. here. We got Nikki Knuckles right there. Uh, we got, uh, who's this kid right here? Oh, that's Francisco. He changes every time I see him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He looks like a different person every time. One, one day one day he's wearing a tight, tight night That shirt fits, though. Yeah, that yeah, shirt fits. Yeah. That's the first shirt I've seen fit. Uh, most of the time, Francisco comes in with this the Mount Prospect uh, yeah. uh, night shirt that's too tight that he got when he was a ninth grade gym class, okay, with the number written in, like an inmate number, <laughs> 78921. That's what he has in there. And then we got Maddie, who's the producer, and she's turned into a bully the last three weeks. Let's get the camera on Maddie over there. She's become a bully the last three weeks. And this yeah. is Tim's This is Tim's niece, okay? Yeah. I didn't know they were related until today. I just found that out today. So we, we've had a double agent. We've had double agents working for us here in America. Just like whispers. Yes, yes. But we, we've had a great time, and I'm looking forward to, to working with Odyssey. I'm looking forward to working with 2400 Sports and then, you know, doing some things with the score uh, 670. That's going to be a lot of fun, too. So we've come a long way. You know, it's funny that we are mentioning the uh, live chat, and, and we usually get uh, – 
some repeat customers on there. Nick Bianchi is a loyal uh, viewer on YouTube, and he said that he didn't know Sauce Packers getting paid like that, that you can oh, afford that kind of a shirt. Wow. <laughs> wow. See, I listen, listen to the show. They know who the Sauce the Packer is. The Sauce Packer. So let's talk about the next big announcement. Yeah, go ahead, Whispers. Right, 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 well, it's, it's not a big deal. Why, why is this? Uh, what's going on with this? <laughs> Sound here. <laughs> we're we're so, editing you for quality yeah, it's, control. It's, it's like this is the Odyssey thing. Yeah, like, yeah, cut him right, now. Yeah. <laughs> There's another sponsor we lost. Serenity now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like I told you earlier, Mark. Uh, but but Stacey, the audience didn't hear this. This is the first time they're hearing it. Right, right. But Stacy, as always, thought, of course, this is how it goes. All right. So, the jewels. <laughs> Your <laughs> the local jewels. jewels. The jewels is picking up the hot sauce, how all four that? flavors, and all. 200 stores, so you'll be able to find it there in it's January, much. maybe February, depending on the timing here, but uh, they're going to be a great partner as well, and uh, really looking forward to working with them. Shout out to Jewel Osco. Yeah. We're keeping it in the city. We got The fans now will be able to get it at all Jewel locations. That's instead fantastic. Instead of going online, because, you know, we've been selling out. Like, it, it's hot. You know, people love our hot sauce. Or we're actually back ordered. Yeah, we're back ordered. Yeah, we, we, so now, so now... You know, we'll we'll be with a distributor to be able to get it out yeah. to more and more locations, to more people. Again, you know, we were like, you know, we're like me and Tim, like rappers. You know, we selling our, our mixtape from the trunk. That's how we've been <laughs> doing with these these hot sauce. We had them on eBay. We had them on Esty. Was it Esty? Uh, Etsy. Etsy, yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> we, <laughs> not anymore. But yeah, <laughs> no. We we had them on everything, and then we just decided, you know, just sell them. You know, Facebook's got them. Uh, we had them on Facebook for a second. We have our MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> TikTok. So, so TikTok, eBay, eBay everything. Yeah. So now, so now all, you know, all the hard work, you know, is starting to pay off for that, too. So a lot of good things are happening for yeah. Give Me the Hot Sauce and, and the show and the hot sauce. And, and uh, it's going to be fun. I can't wait to see, you know, where the future holds with it. So does that mean that uh, Whispers isn't going to be in his closet until midnight packing sauce? No, he's going to hire some little minions, and they're uh -huh. all going to be packing hot sauce like little Oompa Loompas. <laughs> yeah. They're all going to look That's like exactly. Tim. They're going to be like little miniature Tims. They're going to have wear these little tight shirts on like he's got be on bright, right here. But they'll be oh, bright man. red. And they'll be red like lobsters, and they'll be out there packing. <laughs> and we got to pack the hot sauce. We got to pack the hot sauce. Yeah, yeah. Oompa Loompa, oompity doo. I got another riddle for you. So since we've basically done the commercial, uh, why don't we get a, a quick Christopher Walken on where they can find it now uh, for the oh, holiday? Because the holidays are coming up, and they want to get their hot sauce. It's a perfect gift, a perfect wow, stocking stuffer. Yes, a stocking stuffer. There you go. I'm sorry I was standing outside. <laughs> I didn't know I was on yet, but thanks for calling me in, Mark. All right, so you're right. The hot sauce is the best gift for the holidays. Absolutely. I mean, you can get a discount. We'll ship it out quick. The back orders are getting cleaned up. And uh, my man Stacy here, he expects it to be out the next day. But Absolutely. But we're selling out. So get your orders in now. We'll get it there by Christmas. I promise you. So you go to so, gimmethehotsauce.com. Yeah. And use code KING21. Get 21% off your first order. Yes. America. Are you in charge of billing, too? You take care yeah, of that? Yeah, he does it all. You do discounts? No, that's that idiot whispers <laughs> that takes care of that stuff. I'm just the voice of the sauce. <laughs> We need more cowbell. Yeah, I just do dancing for guys like Fat Boy Slim and and add some voiceovers for the hot sauce. I'm pack shit. <laughs> Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken, ladies and gentlemen. For all, for all our loyal YouTube followers, uh, they always love when Whispers does this Christopher Walken ad read. Hey, let's talk a little basketball. Uh, the Bulls got a win they had to have on Wednesday. They beat the Washington Wizards. That game kind of went right down to the wire. And it was interesting, Stacy, that... You know, kind of a sloppy game for three quarters, but it was the Bulls' big three of DeRozan, Levine, and Vucevic who really carried the ball in the fourth quarter. I've been saying this all season long. Those three guys have to play this way every single night for the Bulls to have a chance to, to be really good and to be a threat. Those three guys, they're all stars. I'm not saying they all got to score 20 a night. It would be nice, but, you know, for them to play well. And they, they played well last night. Even though DeMar kind of struggled early with his shot a little bit, uh, Zach, Zach, was, Zach got it going. Vooch got it going. Vooch played more inside. You know, he hit a couple of threes, but he played more inside. But those three guys set the tone for this team. And yeah. we asked DeMar, you know, after the game, you know, um, is there has there been a discussion between those three guys, you know, that they definitely have to come out every night and set the tone? Because they're the only three all-stars the Bulls have. So if you're the best players, you get the most money – you most likely are going to be the guy setting the tone. So uh, he agreed to that. 
You know, else was big, Alex Caruso. His defensive work is unbelievable, and he'll guard anybody on the court. You know, there were situations where he was uh, forced to guard Porzingis in the post, giving up a foot. He doesn't care. You know, he's going to battle a guy, and, and he's going to make sure that he's going to win those one-on-one possessions. I'm going to tell you something. He changes the complexion of the game. You know, we said this last night. You know, I think you take for granted, you know, what he brings to the table. People might look at his numbers, you know, scoring-wise. He only took four shots last night. But he impacts the game in so many different ways other than just scoring. And, you know, when you threw him and Lonzo out there, this is what makes it so – like, it gives the Bulls hope that if Lonzo comes back – where this team could possibly go. Because when you threw both those guys out there last year together, I mean, they were like two locked. It's like having Deion Sanders on the left side, Deion Sanders on the right side as a cornerback. So you have like two all-world cornerbacks that are shut down corners that you don't have to roll the safety over to help out. They can pretty much take away the whole field and make you just play one area of the field. And so when you see Alex play, the diving on the floor, getting his hands on loose balls. He's one of the reasons why the Bulls are tops in deflection. Right. And, we, and we showed the stats last night. The Bulls are in a, in really high category as far as deflections and steals. and But the problem is, is that those are not translating into wins. And the reason why they're not translating into wins, because normally, Mark, when you're, when you're a team that's out there leading in deflections, you're in passing lanes, you're getting steals, turnovers, whatever – you're getting a lot of fast breaks. You're getting a lot of runouts, a lot of dunks. And the Bulls are not getting that. And, and you know, just watching them, you can see why. Because when they get a steal, they're walking the ball basically up the floor. And those are the times you need to get out and push and run. And I thought they did that last night. I thought they got in transition. They got the, got the ball up the floor. And sometimes you may not score a lot of points, but you're putting pressure on the defense and you're pushing the ball, trying to get it down there and trying to get a quick shot. And I thought they did a good job last night. Bulls are now in a stretch where they play four out of five games at the United Center with a quick trip to Atlanta, Atlanta sandwich in between. They have seven more home games coming up in December, so hopefully by the time they get to the new year, they can be back at the 500 mark or even beyond, try to get healthy, and then make a, make a run going into the new year. And I, I know that no one's happier to be, to be back in Chicago than Stacey King. It was a rough week on the road, wasn't it? America. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a rough week for you, boy. Okay, I'm just going to throw this out here. I don't ever complain. No. But I'm freaking complaining right now. Okay, <laughs> over. I've been traveling. I've been traveling the country since I was probably 15 years right. old. Right. I've never, up until this point, never had lost luggage ever. Okay. Now you got to remember now, America. We we don't fly like you know commercial. No. We no. have a private jet. You know, and our bags are taken privately. So we're in we're in California. Last the last road trip. When Sacramento. We come back, yeah. Sacramento before we come home. I put, you know, when we get ready to leave the hotel, they say, you know, leave your bags outside the door. The, yeah. the, the bellman will come pick them up, and they'll take them to a truck, and they'll get them on the plane. Okay, I've been doing this for 25 years as a player and as a broadcaster. Never had a bag left. So I leave my two bags out. I had, I had a feeling, Mark. I said, oh, man, I, <laughs> I should go I, get my I, watch. I, I, should, I should probably bring these down. Because I don't, I don't, I don't see anybody else's bag. Because yeah, normally, yeah. when you're on the floor, you're on the floor with four or five other people, and you'll see their bags out there. So then, you yeah, know it the gives you a sense of comfort because exactly. you know they're going to get it. So when I looked out, looked in my hallway, it was like you know, it was like The Shining. It's one of them long <laughs> ass, you know, those hallways. And, the and, I, and I didn't Here's see, I, I didn't see not one Bulls personnel bag out there. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know about this one. Yeah. So I go downstairs and I tell the security, the security Bulls security who travels. We we have three guys that travel with us. And, um, you know, so I told, you know, my security, I said, hey, look, I got bags on the fifth floor, yeah. 531. They're outside. Make sure you get them. He said, gotcha. So that's the last thing he said. Gotcha. I said, all right, cool. I'm good. Now he's going to yeah. go get them. Man, we get home like 2.30 <laughs> in the morning. It's cold outside, you know. So you got to wait for your bags to come off the yeah. plane. And normally my bags are right in the front because all the players' bags and everybody's were all in the front. They said, hey, just wait. I, I think your bags might be in the very back. I'm like, nah, man, y'all left them. My bags have never been this late. So I sit there. I'm the last one yeah. other than the bag people. I'm the last. Everybody else is in the in the, in the the airport, warm, getting in their car. I'm and you've been there. sick all week. Yes, you gotta yes, be standing exactly. Out of Mark, cold. and I didn't want to say all that, but you, you brought it up. Yeah, I, I've been bad. I battled a sinus infection. So yeah. I shouldn't be outside waiting yeah. in the cold. So I'm waiting in the cold, America. And all of a sudden, all the bags are gone. And I'm the only one out there. My bags are not coming. And then the last, the last thing that came down, a little conveyor belt, was like a little box of shoes. And I go, you got to be kidding me. They yeah. left my bags in California. And so they said, oh, we're going to overnight it. I'm like, okay. So I was upset. They said, we're going to overnight it. So I said, all right, cool. As long as I get them tomorrow or, or Tuesday, yeah. I'll be good. So 
I look on the, they give you a tracking number. So I look at the tracking number. The two bags, my duffel bags, are still in the UPS, sitting at the UPS thing. And I'm like, they haven't had a label yet. So I'm like, well, why isn't they not, why are they not moving? You know, so then, you know, they had to call, whatever. Then they snuck it in. They snuck it in to me. Because they could have they delivered in two days. They said, uh, bags won't be until Saturday at 1030 at night. Well, America, we're leaving again for a second trip to go to Atlanta, Atlanta that night. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's certain things in your bag you need. Yeah, yeah. There's certain things. You know, you know, when ladies go on trips, they got their beauty supplies and all that stuff. Well, let me tell you something. I got beauty supplies too, America. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't voted with 10 most sexiest men in Montana. You know, so I mean that I, doesn't happen I keep, automatically. I keep yeah. myself well groomed. I got yeah. my certain my face washes and all the stuff that I like to yeah. use. It's in my bag. Okay. Sure. So I don't have it now. And I'm a little upset. I'm a little upset about it. And then I had, oh, and then I snuck, you know, I have a, a fire stick that I bring on the road so yeah, I can yeah, watch yeah. all the shows, that makes right? Sense. Yeah. It's in the bag. So I have not been able to watch TV as like oh, I wanted to. Oh, man. My fire mm. stick is gone. No, yellow, still, no Yellowstone this week? Or did you catch it? No, that? I can, I, can, I can watch Yellowstone. I, I watch Yellowstone. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. But I, I'm a little disappointed. So, <laughs> so that happened, America. Then last night, America, let me tell you what happened last night. The Bulls win. So I should be excited and, and celebrating yeah, a big win. Absolutely. I'm happy. And after games, Mark, you seen, I'll go sign autographs and take yeah, pictures always. with people. Every single time. I've done it for like 30 years, okay? I don't care if there's a 1,000 people there. I'll make sure I get pictures and sign yeah. autographs. So that's the thing I do, especially with kids. Never turn down autographs for kids or pictures. Or whispers. So, oh, no, he can wait. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't getting no picture with me. That guy's creepy. So so, so this guy comes down with it. I mean, the beer might have been this. It might have been the, the cup this big, yeah. okay? So the guy comes down. Hey, 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 you get a picture. And so I'm like, okay. He'd had a few good. already. I said, this guy's uh -oh. had a few. So yeah. I said, now the game's over. Most yeah. likely people are not drinking anymore because yeah. the game's over. So I said, hey, man, you might want to give that beer to somebody because I don't want you spilling on my soup. Yeah. He's like, no, nah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm like, oh, this <laughs> good is not, to the last drop. Uh, Monica Sellis. I said, like, <laughs> this is not, I like, this is not a, this Whispers not a, automatically goes there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know, let me tell you something. I, I wasn't really happy about what happened. So yeah. I got my blue suit on. Yeah, looking and, good. And, and, and I, you know, I got Air Force Ones to match all my suits. Yeah. So I'm wearing these baby blue Air Force Ones nice. that are like, they don't make them anymore. They're made out yeah. of cloth. And they're sweet. They go with all my blue suits. They're sweet. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm just styling and profiling. Then all of a sudden, the guy's like, you know, he's like, got this beer. And I'm like, man, this dude's going to spill this beer. <laughs> I'm not even thinking about my Nikes. I'm just thinking he's going to spill on my suit. Yeah. And I'm going to have to throat punch him. So then he, he, he drops the beer like a bomb. <laughs> like, like Hiroshima. Boom! And explodes on my shoes. And hits the shoes, bounces up, gets on my, my, my slacks, my suit. And I'm, I'm looking at him. He's like, say I'm ready to take this picture. I'm like, I'm getting ready to kick your ass. What are you talking about take a picture? He's like, I'm like, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. I'm like, I was like, oh, for a second, Mark, he was getting ready to get a two-piece. Yeah. And with no biscuit <laughs> and no Fanta, no soda. no soda, he was about ready to get it. I had to snap out of it for a yeah. second and remember that I was Stacey King, the broadcaster. So those shoes ruined beyond repair? No, I got to pay. To, I got. I, yeah. I made a phone call today because there's always somebody that does something. Right. Okay? right. So <laughs> I found someone who does cleaning of shoes. So, cloth. That's yeah. That's cloth not shoes. easy. Yeah. yeah. And so he's gonna clean because they were drenched. Yeah. It was like a sponge. You right. know, it was like it was like a paper towel. They just sucked it all in. Like you know, Tim does the you know sucking all in the packing. <laughs> Careful, yeah. careful now. Wow. Careful now. I was just saying, wow. you're, you're a packer. Hey, so, we don't so want to offend the good folks at Odyssey. This is no, no, hey, listen, 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 welcome. We've hey, just been hey, cut. Hey, I just Odyssey, got to be. Odyssey, welcome to our world, Odyssey. <laughs> welcome to our world. This is what we do. Join the team, Odyssey. You're on the team now, baby. You bring don't us up, we'll yeah, bring you down. <laughs> so, that's my, how my week is gone. That's how my week is gone. So, oh, man. It, it, it's only going to get better. All right, hold on a second, though. we got to get to some facts here. You brought up a story. Okay. At least a year or so ago, about how you never got your jeans from the Levi oh, store. Oh, I remember that story. Oh, yeah, yeah that's oh, a great story. So what has okay, happened? Okay. You were out there. Did okay. you? Did you America, finally get them? America. <laughs> As you know, America. I don't know what episode that was. We talked about yeah, that's these back. custom yeah. made Levi jeans. Okay. This has been a, a three, little pricey. This has been a three-year <laughs> yeah, yeah. process. He's still thinking the, the payments. <laughs> hey, hey, baby, you're on layaway. They garnished oh, his check. Hey, listen, it's finance. America, don't listen to these people. Okay, America, these are these are custom-made Levi jeans. They're like a thousand dollars a pair. I didn't know until I didn't know they were a thousand dollar pair until he put the the price out of me, and then I felt obligated to yeah. buy them because you know what they said. Oh, that's I said, fine. That's okay, fine. Yeah, it's okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, so, fine. just finance it, bro. <laughs> so he was like, the guy, his name is Austin. The, 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 I'm not, I mean. 
his name is August. So August says, I go, hey, you know, how much is it? I thought it was going to be like $400 yeah, a piece. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. He's like, uh, then your bill will be 3500 <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Do I get part ownership in the store? Dude, does the jeans talk? <laughs> so if you lose a pair, they'd be like, Stacy, I'm in the closet. Okay, I got you. Come here. I, what? Are they bulletproof? Like, what, 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 what's going on here? He's like, oh, no, they're oh, custom man. jeans. Da, da. So at three, so then we had, so after that, we had COVID. So they weren't, everything was shut down, so they weren't able to do it. Then August, the guy who took all my measurements and everything, he sent me a prototype. So uh, when everything shut down, I couldn't get out there. So we just shut down. Okay, then he left. He left Levi's. <laughs> then they got another tailor. Then this tailor scrapped. Ramp September. This, this, so we went back out there when COVID really, <laughs> don't interrupt me again. So when, when, when COVID reopened up and we, we were able yeah. to travel, we went, yeah. we went back out to San Fran, got a new guy named Mario. He made me, he scrapped all August's plan and did his own thing. So I'm like, okay. So I called him up and let him know, like, yo, I'm coming out to San Fran here in November. I need to come down and finish these jeans. It's been three years now. And I'm, I'm, I'm about, I'm about still ready making to give payments. up. I'm about ready to give up. You know, I'm still making payments. And then so I'm about ready to give up. So he not, he's not answering the call. I'm like, oh, this is not good. It's not good. So I go out there and then. Um, they said, oh, uh, you know, Mario doesn't work here anymore. I'm like, oh, man, God damn. For real? He's, he's, like, no. he's working with August now. He's like, yeah, so he, no, so no. So then I said, well, who's there? Yeah. So now I'm going to get a third tailor. They're going to scrap it, and we're going to have to yeah. do this all over again. And it's going to be the fourth year now. And they go, no, we got we got another tailor who used to work here. April, I'm like, she's hot. So I go, shut up, Tim. <laughs> it's a Me Too generation. You were talking. Oh, then we sorry. already canceled the first show. Yeah. So, so then I find out it's August. August is back. Oh, all right. So August had all my designs and everything, and I went in and got fitted again, and the pair of jeans will be coming, America, in three weeks. And Mr. King, there'll be a $2,000 surcharge. <laughs> hey, listen, I told I listen, yeah. let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There's Special inflation. Order, yeah. They're not getting any no money from me. Okay, <laughs> Levi's, that is it. Yeah. You're not getting no more money from the King, baby. No way. Hey, if you're looking to save money on your insurance needs, make sure to contact our good buddy Jeff Vukovic. When it comes to insurance for your auto, home, and business, you can always count on him. So contact the king of insurance, our friend, nationwide agent Jeff Vukovic. You can reach him at jeffvuk.com. That's jeffvuk.com. He will take care of you. Stacy saw him when he was on the road in Phoenix at the, sure at the Suns Bulls yep. game. And yep. he's always at the United Center and always supporting all of Chicago's teams. And he has a jingle that you just can't get out of your head. Nationwide is on your side. <laughs> Woo! America, America, the pipes was rusty on the road, but they are back, baby. They are back. Well, that was smooth. Stacy is back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, that's about the nicest thing you said to me in 30 years. Yeah, I can't wait to see those jeans, though. <laughs> hey, our special guests coming <laughs> they're up. Be, they're not going to be as tight as yours. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Our special guest coming up is Jerome Poo Richardson. Poo! He was in the same NBA draft as Stacy King. Stacy went number six. Poo Richardson went 10. We'll talk to him about his NBA career and a whole lot more. But before we bring him in, I do want to talk about the big news story of the day. That is Brittany Griner coming home. And we, we applaud the effort of everybody to get her back. It's a shame that it took so long. But, you know, for, for her wife and her family to be able to have Brittany back for the holidays at Christmas time, is fantastic, and you know I don't. No one knows what the the negotiations were behind the scenes, but it's a shame it took that long. And thank God she's coming home. I tell you what, man, because she she was just getting ready to get transferred into some serious serious. Penal colony. Oh yeah. man, that would that have been a terrible. She might not have ever been able to come back from that. Yeah. Um, from what you hear, what goes on there, and what she would have had to deal with, um, it, you know, it, it, it she might not have been able to come back. But you know, give everyone involved uh, that that was involved bringing her home yeah um you know that it's awesome and uh at the end of the day man you know she's she's gonna come back healthy she's gonna come back safe and now, we're not even worried about her basketball career who cares about that you know if she comes back or not it's just it's glad i know her family is just happy or her wife is happy that she's coming home and that's all that matters right now yeah the nba today show on espn this afternoon devoted the whole show to covering Brittany griner's uh return to the united states and they showed her a quick clip of her on the plane and you can tell she she's still in shock because they're asking her questions and, and she's giving like one word answers because at this point, you know, even though she's on a plane, she's probably wondering until I can actually set foot in the United States soil. I don't know what's happening to me because she's been running around, you know, like a, like a political prisoner the whole time. I'm going to tell you something. And you don't know how she was treated yeah. behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so she could yeah. be. I'm sure she's gonna she's gonna at some point talk about her experience, but it might be a while. Yeah, it might but be. you could just tell, like you know, she she's 
she's not, I mean, how could you be? How could you be mentally into where we are today? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if, if you were, your freedom was taken away. You're in a foreign country. That's because that's my biggest thing. Like I watch, you know, Midnight Express. So, you know, everywhere I go, Mark, anytime I go to a foreign country, I always want to know where the USA embassy is. The embassy is yeah. I, I want to yeah, know where the United States yeah. embassy is. That's the first thing. Any place I go. So if I need to, you know, if I need to sneak out and run somewhere, I need to know where I'm going. You yeah. know, I, uh, oh man, I tell you, I had experience in Turkey, Mark, but I can't talk about it right now. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> but I had experience in Turkey. Yeah, it was it was like some Jason Bourne stuff. I was like hiding behind walls and you know in, yeah. in dark alleys, and my Turkish teammates were getting me to where I needed to go. It was woo, man. Yeah, yeah people talk about the money that you can make in Europe and other countries, but you're also at times putting your safety on the line. And yeah, that's, because and they have different rules. It? It's yeah. di it's different rules. They got different laws, um, <clears throat> especially with like when you like in Turkey, you know, marijuana. You saw. Midnight Express, that's real. Yeah, yeah. You get caught with drugs in Turkey, you're going to do some Well, that's time. like with Britney. You know, it would have been a minor offense in almost any country, yeah. and they wouldn't put her in jail for 10 exactly. years. Exactly. They were going to, but that was also a political statement. Sure. That was, sure. That was some pressure from Putin to try to, to get, you know, put the, the screws to the United States for, you know, get the, the angel of death the, back. The, 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 right. The, yeah. The, yeah. You know, the Ukraine <laughs> situation. You know, you, you, know, you, you know, you want to side with Ukraine, then we're going to do this to you. Because it all happened about the same yeah, time. Yeah. And then it got to the point where we want you to release X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z if you want her back. And then that negotiation broke down or whatever. But it, it was, it was, it, it's, you know, it was a sad ordeal. I'm just glad that she's coming home. And I hope that, you know, once they do physicals and everything, um, that she is healthy and she is, you know, will be able to resume her career if she chooses to do yeah. that. But she's going to have an interesting story. She might just quit basketball and write a book. You should definitely do that. There'll definitely be a movie made about that. There's no question about it. So we're just grateful that she's back home to be able to be returned to her wife and her family and enjoy the holidays. And, you know, the WNBA season doesn't start till May, so she's got some time to rest and regroup and maybe resume her basketball career next summer. So Pooh Richardson is going to join us after a quick timeout. This is Give Me the Hot Sauce, episode 110, now available on the free Odyssey app. Episode 110 of Give Me the Hot Sauce rolls on. It's now our pleasure to welcome in this week's special guest. He is Jerome Pooh Richardson, 10-year NBA career, drafted 10th overall by the Minnesota Timberwolves. Thanks for joining the show. And, and Stacy was telling me a story before the, we came on that you guys were playing in a youth tournament and, and you were feeding them no, the ball. No, college con tournament. College it tournament? Was a college tournament before yeah. the draft. Well, tell the story, yeah. So, Pooh, I was telling him about it. We, we were on the same team uh, in the last game that we played in the at that college tournament in Orlando. And, right, and, right, and, and yeah. You, and I had like 48 points that last game, and you was feeding me every single time down the floor. And I was going up against Cliff Robinson, who was talking trash in the practice, because we used to have to practice before we actually played these yeah. games. And I came down. I wasn't even going to play in the game because we had just lost the tournament uh, in the tournament, and so I was just kind of ticked off. So uh, Pat Williams called me up and said, "Hey, you know, we we starting this tournament in Orlando. We'd like you to come down and play." Da da da. I'm like, "Well, you know, lottery players don't necessarily play in those kind of games." Right. And so he talked me into it. I went down there, and the practices because we never it was like it was like a combine, and dudes was coming at us. Like, I mean, like if you was a lottery pick, they was coming at you. Like I'm <laughs> like, well, okay, y'all, I gotta. I wasn't doing too good in the practice. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't look like a, I didn't look like a lottery pick in the practices, but when them lights came on, yeah. it was game time, and it really counted. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was looking like a lottery pick. So Cliff Robinson, R.I.P. Cliff Robinson, Uncle Cliff, he was yeah. a good dude though. Uh, you know, he was talking trash <coughs> in the practices. I'm gonna bust you. I'm gonna bust you. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. And then uh, so he was talking before the game. So Pooh was like, "Yeah, we got him. Don't worry about that. I got you. <laughs> I got you. So I got you. Don't worry about it." So <laughs> we started playing. I was rolling. Boom. You know. Just scoring at wheel. Boom, 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 boom. And he's like, I'm gonna feed you every time, big fella. Kill him. Kill him. Go at him. Go at him. And he would because Pooh was always Pooh was always demonstrative. He always he would talk trash. Uh he was talking trash for me. And so he's like, kill him. He can't guard you. Show him why, show him why you a lottery pick. He he can't guard you. Eat him up, King. I'm coming to you again. Get on the block. Get on the block. He talked to me the whole way. I had 48 points. And it was because of him. It's all about a great you know. Guy. You know what? When you go in those things, uh, it's like all star games and, and camps or evaluation camps they, they do for the young kids. And most of the time, the balls are in the guards' hands. And they can determine how you're going to play or how you're not going to play. They can play loose and crazy, and it'd be about themselves. And that's that becomes the pick the pickup or the schoolyard game. Or you can play smart and work your big guys and let your big guys be successful. 
and then you ride off of them. I had the I had the fortunate pleasure to have you and Mike Smith on my team. So I had two guys that I didn't have in college that I could actually feed underneath the basket that can score. So that was just a, a new thing to me, but it was fun. And it made the game for me so easy because at the same time, you were solidified being the top five pick. You know, I was on the second end of that, could have fell six or eight, something like that. You was all, you know, so I still had to do my job. But at the end of the day, it was all about you guys because I just I just fed off for you guys. Stacy's told us some stories about his time with the Minnesota Timberwolves. You were the very first draft choice when they came into the league. What was that like for you playing, coming into the league, playing on an expansion team? Was was Bill Musselman the coach then at that point? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Coach Muss was there. You know, may he be blessed and rest in peace. Yes. Um, it was. Um, you know what? A lot of people would say it was uh, a good thing because you can play right away. But it, it's some pros and cons to that because you don't have pretty much a veteran group of guys to help lead you, to get you kind of ready, all the way ready, even though in the summers at UCLA, the guys play there all the time. The pros always played there since I was there and before me. So I had the experience of playing against a lot of the pros and I was comfortable. But, you know, when you're actually in the pro game and just learning – how to play in your development of your skills and understand how to play with professional guys who's actually 10 to seven years older than you. Uh, you coming in, you're 20, 21 years old. It's it's a whole different dynamic. And and the, un, the good thing about it was I did get a chance to play early when other guys had to sit behind guys and learn. But, you know, the con behind that is I played on a team full of guys that were supplemental draft guys. Yeah. who felt they belonged. So they wasn't teaching me, showing me nothing, because they was just trying to establish themselves <laughs> that they're bona fide NBA guys. So I, I had that struggle for a minute, and most of the guys were from the CBA, which Coach Bill Musselman coached. So he had his favorites, and, and I dealt with a lot, man. I, I did, it, might have, it might not look like it, but I dealt with a lot. Talk a little bit about growing up in Philadelphia, and we, we all know the stories, you know, in Philadelphia and the summer leagues out there. Here you are a kid on the East Coast, but you end up on the West Coast. You probably could have went to any school. You were a McDonald's All-American, could have went to any school that you wanted to. What what made you, well, other than the weather, what made you? What made <laughs> That's you a good choose? reason. What, what was other, your other, reason? other than the weather. <laughs> <laughs> what was your reason? Well, you know, well, I look at it like this. Um, Walt Hazard was the coach at the time. May he rest in peace. Coach Hazard was there and Coach Andre McCarter, two guys who was actually from Philadelphia, okay. two guys who was guards actually from Philadelphia. And um, it actually came down to me either going to Syracuse, uh, Temple, or UCLA. And I decided to go back west. You know, they, when I went to my visit, it was in November. It was really cold in Philly. I get off the plane. It's about 90 degrees. And I get the chance to UCLA play against Nebraska football and the tailgate and just that whole experience was, I was like, man, I, I can do this. I can, I can actually live here. And once I decided that I can live, because all me making the decision to go to school was going to be all about, is this a place that I can live? If basketball doesn't take me to where I hope it take me, you know, it, it, it got me to college. Could I live this place just being a guy with a job? You know, quite naturally through relationships and all people you meet in college, could I live here? And the answer was yes. And then that's that helped me make the decision. How much pressure is there on college athletes at UCLA? It might not be the same now, but back then, you know, you were a ways removed from the John Wooden era. But there was a period of time where UCLA was winning the championship almost every year. When you first arrived on campus, did you feel like? Wow, I'm, I'm I'm the point guard at UCLA, and 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 I've got to run this club. Did you did you put extra pressure on yourself to try to uphold the UCLA tradition? Well, you know, it. The first thing I did was was basically try to introduce myself to the upperclassmen, you know, because there was a bit, slight bit of little intimidation. They felt because you know the the things pointed my way. My my two coaches, the head coach and assistant coach were both from Philadelphia, and they were guards, and I'm a guard from Philadelphia. They struggled the, prior, the year before that at the guard position. So 
I'm sure that, you know, they wasn't accepting me too kindly. And that's, that's anything. When you go to competitive sports, you're going to get that. Uh, so the first thing I did was introduce myself to the guys and, and let them know I'm just a regular guy. And we're going to compete hard, but we teammates. And all I did was just compete it and, and stay true to the, to the grind of the game and had a chance to talk to Coach Wooden a few times on a few occasions just about just basketball and, and, and what it means to play at UCLA because you knew, but you really didn't know because that was the era when the Big East was taking off. And when you started going towards the Midwest, you had Stacy and those guys, and then you had UNLV. So you didn't really get to UCLA, you know, during that era. But it, it, was, it was a great tradition. I learned more about the tradition probably my second and third year there that I, that I knew coming in. The coolest thing that, that I ever had uh, was be able to talk to John Wooden at the Wooden Awards and, and spent like an hour sitting there picking his brain and, and talking to him about, you know, not just the history of, of UCLA, but just the, the evolution of the game and how far it's come. Now, as, a, as, a, as older guys like ourselves, what do you think about the game and the evolution of the game now? Because it's totally different from when we played to where it is now. Well, I get in constant arguments. Um, I do agree that the players of today's era are really are, are really athletic. They are, I think that's the best as far as raw talent that the league has ever seen. And I think it's even getting even more uh more athletic because of the training facilities and the training regiments. And they doing it at such a young age when we we normally didn't lift weights until we got in you know, our second year of college. These kids are lifting weights and doing all these things in third and fourth grade. So the athleticism there, but I still debate the skill level. A lot of those guys who play today, which I love, I love, I love it. I love the game. But a lot of those guys cannot do the things that were demanded of us to do when we played. They got three and D guys. Then they got a two-way guy. I'm like, what the hell is a two-way guy? You couldn't play if you didn't play defense. Exactly. So now you're you you getting a, a, a double title because you played defense. Well, that was expected of us if we was going to be out there on the court. And the guys who shot threes, you defended. You shot the three. And if you didn't make the three, you sat. And they were, they were specialists, though. They were specialist guys. Um, guys who played all the time, started and in a rotation like myself, you expected to play defense and you expected to play the other team toughest guard in that position. They didn't hide you. You didn't get low management and all this other stuff. We never got that. So that's what's a little different about the game to me uh, today than yesteryear because yesteryear it was, it was more about the skill. You had to have a skill level. If you run and jump, that was okay, but you had to have a skill level. You had to make that mid-range. You had to be able to get other players involved. You had to feed your big guys. Your big guys stayed underneath the basket. It's, it's different now. Big guys is out in the perimeter. Low guards is penetrating, going to the basket anytime they felt like it. It didn't happen when we was playing. After you left Minnesota, you went to Indiana, which is one of the Bulls' biggest rivals in, in the division. And, you know, you played with another UCLA great, and Reggie Miller. What are your recollections of your battles against Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Stacey King, and those Bulls? Well, the Bulls were tough. I mean, they, they were just hard to beat. Um, you just knew that you had to play your best for four quarters. If you left a window open, even in the fourth quarter with four minutes left, you're probably going to lose that game. You're most likely going to lose that game, especially in Chicago Stadium. Um, those great times, it was great atmosphere. I I was very happy for Stace and BJ. We all came in at the same time. And for them to get rings and, and be a part of that. And, and I, I'm here to say, I'm sure they probably felt that they could have done more in the league because they were capable. Now, they were capable guys. Now, they could have done more. But for what they did for their team and for what the success that they had, I'm telling Stace, just like I talked to BJ about two weeks ago, and I'll say, 
you guys, you guys was in a great spot, and and you shouldn't feel like you missed left left nothing on the table. You guys, because you, I wish I would have had what you guys had. I agree with you. I, agree. I, I tell people that all the time. Like to to be on a, on a championship team, you know, there's the pie is big enough for everybody. You know, there'll be some people get more pieces than others, but the pie is big enough for everybody. And I would rather, me personally, I would rather win than be on a losing team and getting my butt kicked every single night and not even having a chance to win. When you're on a team that every night you step on the floor, there's a 90% above chance you're going to win that game. And when I went to Minnesota, uh, I went from the penthouse to the outhouse. I ain't going <laughs> to lie. But the only thing, only thing that was good about that poo for me was – is that I got to prove to myself, given the opportunity to play 30-plus minutes compared to playing 18 to 20 minutes, what I right. actually could do. Like, I could actually score at this level. I could actually put up numbers. I could actually do some things. So it proved, it, it, it really proved to myself, like, okay, like, I can still do this, what I was doing in college, but I'd rather take them rings, though. i, I still rather take those rings if I had to do it all over again. Well, Stace, let me tell you, from my perspective, and when I saw when I seen you play the first time, you didn't need to go to Minnesota to, to figure out you can do what you can do, because you can do what you can do regardless. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell our audience, Pooh, what you're doing now. I know you've been coaching some AU. You've been doing a little coaching. Oh well, what I've been doing is that I, I live now. Uh, to me, people, I don't know if you're familiar with the Palm Springs area. Yeah. Um, that's near. Well, one well, of the biggest thing they have now going every year is that Coachella Fest stuff. So I live in the Palm Springs area, which is about an hour and a half out of Los Angeles. I've been there for the last eight years. Um, I play a lot of golf. I play a lot of pickleball. And I just <laughs> I, I, I donate a lot of my time to youth organizations, YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, the local junior college. That's why I'm out here in Santa Barbara now. And uh, Rancho Mirage High School back there. Um for the most part, that's that's what I do, man. That's what I do. I think uh, now I've been blessed to have an opportunity to play the very sport that I love and to fulfill my dreams. And I took care of myself the right way. And this is the time now I have just all for myself. You know, my kids are grown. Uh, just me and my wife. That's it. We good. Pickleball, huh? I'm, I'm getting into that, baby. I'm getting that pickleball. Hey, I just talked. I go. I talked to Jamie Foxx the other day. He he make paddles, right? Yeah. So he says, look, you know, I'm, I'm in London shooting a movie. When I come back, you know, we're going to play because he just got finished getting some courts built at his home. Wow. I mean, this guy is serious about it. And not only that, he's going to do an entertainment league. And your boy Mitch Richmond is out here. Yep. And a lot of those guys, you know, they're going to play in that entertainment league he's going to have doing the pickleball. That's yeah, big time now. That thing has exploded. Yeah, and it's really easy here because you can play outdoors all year round. Oh, nice. Hey, we got to ask you about the nickname. Is it as simple uh, as the Winnie the Pooh, or what's the uh, origination of the Pooh nickname? Well, my grandmother did that when I was when I was little. I was a chubby baby, and I, and she used to call me Pooh Bear all the time. So that's that's how that stuck with me. Uh, most of the time, it's so crazy because some people don't even know my real name, so <laughs> it's almost it's almost hard to shake now. But it's uh, it's been a good thing, man. It's been a good thing. I, I'm not, you know, when your grandmother gave you a nickname, you know, you got to go with it. Absolutely. And, and you know the other guy named Pooh, don't you? Guy named yes. D Derek Rose. D Rose. That's right. D Rose told me uh, we was in uh, because when he was coming into the league, he was he was represented by the same guy who represented me, which is Aaron Tellum. And I would, Arn would always call me down to the gym because at the same time, he was representing Russell. And they came out the same time, same year. They would work out against each other in the gym. That's the first time I met Derek's brother, Reggie. And he's like, you know, and Derek's like, they call me Pooh. And, and you know, we, we, we joke about that a little bit. And then when I, Minnesota brings me in periodically. He was there that night. He scored the 50 points or whatever. I was at that game. Um, I came to shoot around before that game and me and him, we talked about some stuff, you know, because he was making his transition to figure out, you know, he had five more years left, two more years. And, you know, you know, the injuries, you know, injuries plague your career. So, you know, we had a good conversation and not like, lo and behold, he scored 50 points after the game. I was like, man, you might do this for 10 more years. Hey, Pooh, there's another funny thing too, is that, uh, 
because you were that first pick with Minnesota that one of your cards recently sold, rookie card for twenty five grand in an auction. Is that right? Yeah. Isn't that good news? Yeah. <laughs> Too bad That's you didn't have cool. it. Too bad you didn't get it. <laughs> I know. Can, can you send us a couple? Maybe, maybe the guy who spent 25 might want to spend another 25 because I got tons of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I found myself right in front of you. Well, leak them out slowly. Leak them out slowly. <laughs> yeah, don't oversaturate the market, right? <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. Isn't that something? All right. There's a bit of silence there. <laughs> it stunned us all. <laughs> Honestly, these things like when you when you in a like a new franchise or or something that's historical. Yeah. Even though, like I was telling Stacy, even though I didn't get the rings, at least I got that because I could have been in Sacramento. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You know what's funny? You know what's you funny? Thought you were going to I thought I was going to Sacramento too. They took Purvis instead. So, yeah. but I, I tell you, I remember our first game. The Bulls came to play you guys. It was in the Metrodome, and we played in the, yes. the foot. Oh man! I tell you, that was one of the oh, hardest. 40, people. It was yeah. forty thousand people. That was like that great, was like great playing shooting background. Oh huh? my god! It was like <laughs> it was like the NCAA tournament. Yeah. That's what it yeah, felt yeah. like. I mean, they they have a loyal fan I mean, base. They have a loyal I fan mean, base in Minnesota, um, and it was it was that was forty thousand plus. At the Metrodome, and that was one of the hardest yes. places to shoot. Oh, I can imagine. Remember that pool? That was the second. That was the second largest crowd, uh, behind the Celtics. I think we had, I, I want to say we had, fifty-two. Woo, fifty-two mm. against the Celtics. But you know, and I would, and I'll say to people during that time, Minnesota was very hot, entertainment-wise. Yep, Prince. Janet was living there doing this, doing our stuff with Flight Time with Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam. <laughs> Alexander O'Neal, Prince was just doing the Purple Rain and Cherry Moon stuff, and it was it was it was just yes, you know that, that Minnesota's always been the hidden gem. Yes, that's what people don't oh, know. Really, it's really hidden gem. <laughs> there's some great there's some great gems Diamond down the there. Rough. There's some great gems down there, boy. Oh Lord, oh my goodness. Original draft pick of the Minnesota Timberwolves. It was great visiting with Pooh Richardson. We're going to talk a little football and a whole lot more. So keep it right here. Episode 110 of Give Me the Hot Sauce rolls on. Back on episode 110 of Give Me the Hot Sauce by contractual obligation where you have to say something about the Bears. They're off this week, so they can't lose. But wow. you know, Justin Fields had a really good game individually until the end when they were desperate and he got picked off a couple of times late. But he completed 80% of his passes. He had that another thrilling long touchdown run. And Stacy, this guy, we, we, we almost talk about it every week, but it's, it's worth it because he has become the it quarterback in the NFL. He's, I saw I saw where he's like in the top ten quarterbacks of the NFL. Yeah, which is uh, if you would have looked at the beginning of the year, he wouldn't have been nowhere in the rate running at all. Um, it just goes to show you again, I, like when he was out when he missed the Jets game. You know that tells you how important he is because just his his running ability and his ability to 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 keep the play alive. Uh, puts him on a different level. Um, the big thing for the Bears again um, is to get him some protection, get him a running game, get him get him some some better receivers. You know, um, this is a franchise quarterback, and you don't want him to get out there every single year and feel like he's got to run for a thousand yards to even have them have a chance to win because his career is not going to be long. If you look at all the quarterbacks who come in there, they're athletic. I mean, look at Lamar Jackson. He, he He's out, you know, four four weeks with a hurt knee trying to run. Yeah. Um, you know, Cam Newton's career, you know, cut short because of injuries. Uh, Robert Robert Griffin the third injuries. You know, this dude ran a 4, 340. You know? Yeah, his so, career was really short. Yeah, his career was really short. So you got to be careful. And if you're the Bears, you're looking at this guy not just as a runner but as a franchise-level quarterback that has the ability to run and stretch the play open. But he's actually a pocket passer, a guy that can stay in the pocket and throw if he has time. He's only forced to run. You're forcing him to run because the offensive line is like it's like you know you used to play sandline football and you had to count before you get the quarterback right, one thousand one right. one thousand two. Well, uh, the defense ain't even counting. They just <laughs> they just running in and you know it's like all you know all, everybody's coming at the same time and he's just got to run for his life. I know you're in Sacramento getting ready to do that game, uh, which was an early start out there. But the Packers Bears game, uh, the Bears are up sixteen to three. And I tweeted, it looks like there's a changing of the guard in the NFL's oldest rivalry. And of course, Aaron Rodgers came back and got the last laugh. But whispers, he didn't. Rodgers didn't play that great in that game. No, no, not at all. But uh, did you see the next sixteen to three game? The uh, Tampa Bay game. Yeah, the yeah. Last Brady, four, Brady last with four two minutes. Touchdown drives. Yeah. The goat. Yeah. Yeah. I, no one feels sorry for him. Hey. <laughs> hey. Keep sleeping on Tom Brady if you want to. 
Well, they're okay. going to be in the playoffs. So listen, they, they're going to win the division. Okay. They're going to have, have a crappy record. Did you, did you see the end of that game? He actually threw three touchdowns. One was pulled back. Yeah, for yeah. penalty. Yeah. And let me tell you something. And then he was know, pulled keep, back 10 yards. I don't need you to touch me like that. Okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, All you got to do is say, hey, Stacy, you see that play? The way you just touched me, it was kind of creepy. I was a little excited okay? about it because, yeah, because yeah. I needed him to do that to win yeah, my uh, you, fantasy you, football week. Hey, 30 years, you've never touched me like that. That felt kind of creepy. Okay, we, we've been oh, friends right. for 30 years, oh, yeah, America. You think that's hey, creepy? Hey, come stop on it. now. It ain't that type of party, baby. <laughs> keep your hands to yourself. We're going to have to call HR. We don't have HR. We're going to have to call him. We'll get HR. Oh, we got got we got uh our, our good rich? friend Rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know what he says? Part of the hangover crew. He is yep. HR. You know what he yes. says when he comes in? Yes. Yes. What's your effing problem? <laughs> listen, listen, America. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram or I, I know y'all saw my little video, my little heartfelt yeah. video of my friends. You know, and Rich crashed it. Rich, you know, listen. So, <laughs> oh, so today, so go. today, whispers, he's pink slipping them whisper, off, whispers, whispers, off whispers, Facebook. Whispers <laughs> comes in and goes, "Hey, uh, Rich is really touched that you added yeah. all the pictures." I said, "Shit, I had no other choice. He was in every picture that we took, <laughs> oh, wow, so I had to put him in. I had to put him in. You guys. Yeah, so he was in there. Wow. <laughs> so, so all." All the videos, I had to put him in, so it looked like he was in the Hangover Crew. So I, yeah. honor, I, I made him an honor member. But he got us a nice cold drink for the show. That was nice. Yeah, that's why he only did that because he was in the video. He's working, yeah. his, he's working he his was, way back. If he wasn't in the video, he would not have got us anything to drink. Hey, college football is down to the final four to decide the national champion. Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and Ohio State gets in in the back door after USC got routed by Utah in the Pac-12 championship game. And I know Stacy's a big Georgia fan now, right? Yeah, I went to Georgia. <laughs> uh, I went to Georgia, America. We're number one. Go dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Stacey uh, almost got outed yesterday in our pre-production meeting. I was visiting my daughter up in Milwaukee. Oh. So we did a Zoom call, and he started running down Ohio State like, what are they even in there? You know, they're not any good. And, you know, they can get blown out oh. by Georgia. Hey. And my daughter just happened to be on the other side of the room, and I had to bring her in, the proud graduate of the Ohio State University. And, and Stacy, uh, Stacy smoothed that over there. Let me tell you something. Time. Let me tell you something. You trust certain people in this world. <laughs> and you call them friends, and they backdoor you. They backdoor you. So I'm talking to Mark in the production yeah. meeting, thinking that Mark was somewhere else. I didn't know where Mark was at the time. I didn't know he was in Milwaukee. I told you I was driving up to Milwaukee. To I see didn't my pay daughter. attention to you, Mark. Okay? <laughs> so so Mark's in this high-rise, in this beautiful high-rise that yeah. oversees the, the whole Vice city of form, Milwaukee. Yeah. Milwaukee, it's really not a good view, but in you know, but for that it's a good yeah, view. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's not Chicago view, but it's a no. good view for Brooke. It's a very good view. So you can see everything. Yeah. Okay. So Mark started talking, you know, we're talking, I started talking trash about Ohio State, because they shouldn't be there. Not the way they got beat at home well, by Michigan. Who else are you gonna put in there? Put Alabama in there. They got two losses. Alabama is better at two losses than Ohio State. You sound like Nick Saban. I'm telling you. I'm with Nick. He's politicking hey, all I'm, Saturday hey, night. I'm with, every Slick Nick. I'm with Slick Nick. Slick Nick, okay? Slick Nick's got a point. Two Is losses, that, you're out. No, no two loss no, teams ever no, been in. No, SEC, compared to the Big Ten, two different conferences. They lost to Tennessee at Tennessee in overtime. That loss should have been a wash. Now, I'll give them the one loss because they didn't have their quarterback. But I will tell you this. If you line up Ohio State right now, in Alabama right now, I guarantee you, Alabama beats Ohio State just like Michigan manhandled them. They never have taken a two-loss team since the college football playoff started. It doesn't matter, Mark. It doesn't matter. I'm a professional I'm analyst. analyst. I'm a professional <laughs> analyst, okay? <laughs> thank, thank you, D. Way to throw that in there, boy. No, but listen, Ohio State Ohio State is is a solid football team, okay? But two teams from the, from the Big Ten – Michigan showed that first they, time that's ever Michigan happened has shown that they are the dominant team. Now they going Michigan gonna be you know the dominance ain't gonna be too dominant next year or whenever USC and all the other teams come in. It's gonna be interesting to see. And then Notre Dame, there's a possibility that Notre Dame might sneak in there too and be in the Big Ten. Woo! Yeah, there's a possibility, no question. That not. could be a hell of a conference. Did uh, did Caleb Williams lose the Heisman uh, after that game last Friday? How in the hell? Let me tell you. They something. got run out. Let me by tell Utah. you something. Their their defense absolutely sucks. Yeah, and, it is bad. and and, it's and, really and bad. if they would have went to the to the four, they it didn't matter who they would have played. They'd have got ran out because yeah. they you because they, their team is based off outscoring everybody. Right. But Utah took it personal. You know, Utah heard all the trash talking, all you know this and that, and the the Caleb point, you know, putting his fingernails and all that stuff. You know, f Utah. Well, buddy, they kicked your ass. They sure did, and they beat him twice. Beat they, him twice. Yeah. The first one was the first one was kind of like you, you could say like yeah, oh, right down to the wire. That's kind of fluky, but there was no doubt that Utah was the better team. And until Lincoln Riley gets, I, I guarantee you, he's a hell of a recruiter. 
he's going to go out and get a defense. He's going to get some five stars. But, hey, I'm going to tell you something right now. Don't sleep on my boy Deion Sanders now. There you go, Colorado. Oh, no, Coach Prime is going to turn Colorado <laughs> around. He, hey, listen. You get all of, the recruits. There's a lot of people who are mad that he left Jackson State and not for the right reasons, okay? This guy should have been the coach of Florida State. But he did. Florida State passed on him because he didn't have experience. Yeah. So the only team that would hire him was the SB, you know, FBCU uh, school. So he went there, and Jackson State won. He, they're undefeated this year. They're going to a bowl game. They're going to probably end up undefeated. Now he goes to Colorado. Colorado's a, a program that's been down for like the last 10 years. They're in the Pac-12. Pac They've been struggling. Now he's got resources. He's got legitimate boosters. He's got a lot of different things, the facilities. And – he recruits people just off his name. Yeah. Because when you watch, I'll tell you the one thing he does that no other coach is doing, he documents everything he does. Everything's on social media. Everything's on social media. And all these kids are on social media. So if you're a college coach out there, you need to be watching Deion Sanders because Deion Sanders is recruiting through social media. And all these kids, kids are getting into the portal. They're, I mean, they're piling in the portal to get to Colorado. They had 200 uh, calls to come to Colorado from different players. And a lot of them were five-star guys leaving programs. So he is going to turn that program. It might not be the first year, but give him three years, Colorado's going to be a player in the Pac-12. How about his speech to the returning players? He had a camera hey. crew there. He says, all you guys better get in that transfer yeah. portal because I'm bringing yeah. my own luggage. I'm bringing my own luggage, okay? <laughs> Including I, his son playing quarterback, I, I'm gonna right? Tell, I'm going to tell you, man, listen, like that, that puts some people on notice. Oh, yeah. You know, so if Those you're, kids if, look shell-shocked. They're looking you, yeah. at my oh, my God. Yeah, if you're at Colorado and you're a returning player there – I mean, you know. Better update the resume. Yeah, Get you, that you, yeah. But, but, audition but, tape together. But, but you know what, too, Mark, if you're a player that wants to win, yeah. if you're a player that, that's going to take that as a challenge, you're like, I'm going to show him I can play. I'm going to show him that I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the guys. There's going to be some guys that do that. There's going to be some guys that are going to be intimidated and say, no, I can't play here. You know, I mean, I wasn't even playing on this team, so I'm not I'm definitely not gonna play on this team. <laughs> so, excuse me, can you tell me where the portal is? Um, oh, it's down yeah. the hall to the right. It's right down yeah, there. Right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah, go. So don't let be, the door hit you. There'll, there'll be out. some of those guys going. Yeah. But what would have happened if all those guys would have all walked out? Like all, I think there were he'd 60 have been fine. Been. He'd have been fine with it. Man, he would have had a hard time. Yep. He'd have had a hard time building the program. Yeah, because you can't lose no 40, 50 yeah. people. Yeah. and then all of a sudden now you don't. Even, let's say let's say he brings twelve people from Jackson State. Yeah. Okay, because he's gonna bring his son, both his boys. He's gonna bring the stud receiver, uh, Travis Hunter, who's a five star receiver that came that that you know left Alabama and all these top schools to come play for him. Uh, he's got a couple other five star guys that are playing at Jackson State. They're gonna probably come too. So he's not gonna have a team to full of roster if all those guys would have said, you know what, Coach Prime, we don't like your attitude. We're leaving. Well, they were one and eleven. He says, "Good riddance. I can't use you anyway." He came on strong though, Mark. Yeah. That's the only thing I would say. Is like you know. Like you, you go in there with your, you know, an idea. We're going to change the mentality. Yeah. Here. We're going to change the culture. We're going to get back to winning. We're going to make. And you this, could say this. something like, "If you guys want to win and work hard, yes. then I can yes. use you. I can yeah. use you. If you yeah. don't want to work hard and you yeah. want to come here and cut corners, then I, I advise you to get in the portal." Mm. But the way he came off was like, "All y'all need to yeah, get in the portal. Go. <laughs> All y'all suck. Get in the portal." And I was just like, "Man, that's 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 yeah. pretty deep. That was pretty. tough. That's pretty tough, man." Woo. Hey, whispers, tell the good folks about uh, our friends at Angel Water. All righty. So it's water, the water he Come on now. Drink at all it's happy time for stage. Hey, our, hey, our new partners are monitoring your reads. So, <laughs> yeah, right. so sell this, all right? That is why we only drink Angel Water here in the Hot Sauce Studios. Stay hydrated all year long with water you can trust. Get a free water test today from Angel Water. Call 847 382 7800 to get your water tested for free today. That is 382 7800. <laughs> Ask for Andy. Ask for Chief Little Eggs. We'll take care <laughs> see, of it for you. See, now he Andy. did it. Yeah. Andy. Oh, it wasn't Andy. us. I know well, Andy's listening. Yeah. So, yeah, I got, I got thrown under the bus my, last uh, time when Andy came here. Yeah. He was all, oh, Stacey's the one called Chief Little Eggs. Right? America, well, America, America, I do do. I do call him Chief Little Eggs. <laughs> but not all the time. You've not created a time. culture here. Not all the time. No. Disco Danny Terry over here. <laughs> Stay in the line. Stay in the line. He's the one that said it. Chief Little Eggs. He's the one that said it. Just like whispers. A couple oh. of quick thoughts on the baseball winter meetings that just wrapped up. Aaron Judge gets a huge deal to stay Ooh. with the New York Yankees. Nine years, $360 million. Ooh. The uh, bidding war for the shortstops went crazy. Trey Turner getting $300 million to go to the Phillies. Uh, oh. Xander Bogart's got $285 million, I think, to go Ooh. to change teams. So <laughs> now people are what wondering, where's Carlos Correa going to wind up? Uh, our buddy Carlos is looking for like $350 million. The Cubs are in the bidding war. I think they'll land him, Stacey? 
If they want to start turning their program around. Yeah, so, they should. So what I read the other day that uh, the Ricketts told uh, Hoyer that he can go out and yeah. spend as much money as needed to get, make the team a contender. So that's good news if you're a Cub fan because it just seemed like, you know, that they weren't going in that direction when they let all their star players just, you know, go to different teams or whatever. Uh, so that's a good thing to to, uh, to hear. Uh, I tell you what, you know what the one that's really surprised me is Wilson, Wilson uh, Contreras going, going to the to rival Cardinals. Cardinals. Oh, that, that, hurts. Hurt. that That hurts. stung. Yeah. That stung. Ooh. That that had to be personal. Oh yeah, that had it's to like be personal. Where can I hurt them the most? That had I'll to go be to per- St. Louis. That had Ooh. to be personal because like that that is a bitter rivalry of the Cubs. Yeah. And for him to sign, what is it, eighty seven? Five years, eighty seven mm-hmm. million. And a half. I thought the Cubs, See, the Cubs to, didn't want him for five years, though. That was the problem. Man, I just thought, you know, I thought they would find a way. Like, that, that kid, he's a good catcher. He's one of the top catchers in the game. And it's just amazing they let him walk. They know? don't like him defensively, though. They feel like he's not in the top half of catchers. Well, defensively. obviously, Isn't St. Isn't he a Lewis 10-year was. All-Star and was the starter of the National League this past year? But that's all based on offense, though. Well, oh, let okay. me tell you something. Oh, St. yeah, he does St. have Louis, a silver uh, St. Louis liked him. St. Louis yeah. liked him. Yeah, they Yachty, made Yachty retired, and he's yeah. going to take over. Yeah, they, they yeah. liked him. So, obviously, his defense was not a concern for St. Louis. And as we're looking at the graphic on YouTube here, that does not look right to see Wilson Contreras wearing the, the Cardinal uniform. No, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's like watching Michael Jordan with the with the. Oh, Wizards. yeah, that oh, was horrible. Just, oh, that was terrible. Oh, it's <laughs> terrible. Scotty in Portland. Oh, Lord. Will Perdue in San Antonio. Oh, it's, just, <laughs> it's just not here. Yeah. Stacey King in Minnesota. It just, yeah. didn't, it just doesn't rain. BJ at Golden State. It just doesn't, it doesn't look good. Horace Grant in Orlando. Oh, I can just go on and on. Oh, no, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> hey, now that you're back home, you get a chance to catch up on some TV. Of course, you don't have your fire stick, but... Uh, what are you watching? Do you have any recommendations stay. for the folks at home? <laughs> yeah, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, Mark, we, got, we, got, we got partners to take care <laughs> of. Okay, right? I'm sorry, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, America, I'm sorry. Welcome, Odyssey. I thought, you watch, I thought you were watching the Tulsa King. <laughs> oh, hey, I watched that show. What did you watched, think of it? I, I love it. it. I thought it was good. Yeah. I saw the first episode, you know, but... It just, it just, it, I like Sly, so it, but his 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 accent it just kills me. Sometimes. It's always the yeah. same. It's always the same in every uh, movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, God, I can't. Can get any good food? You want know me? You want know me to kill me? I'm, like, oh, I'm a capo too. Hey. Yeah, look at this. So that that's that's pretty good. That's whispers yeah, right there. Okay, yeah. mine go to mine, boys. It's an old fan favorite. Okay, good. Oh, The Walking Dead. Okay, so America. Don't talk about me like that. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, <laughs> so America. I've always been a fan of The Walking Dead. I stopped working. I stopped watching it honestly when Rick blew up the bridge and then he got put, uh, teleported on a helicopter. I stopped watching it. Um, that's a big mistake. So I, I never saw season ten, and now I think it's season eleven. There's eleven seasons, so this is the last season of it. They're having some spinoffs with Daryl. So I got a chance to watch the whispers. So I, I think of Tim every time I see yeah. the whispers. The whispers are able to walk amongst the dead, and they they had so so like so like the the good guys don't know who they are. So when they, you see a mob of zombies coming. These whispers are in the with the zombies, and, and the zombies <laughs> never bite them. They just. They, It'd be uh, funny if one of them talked like Christopher Walken, wouldn't it? The Walking no. Dead. <laughs> oh, hey, listen. Hey, listen. We, he, he would not last in the Walking just Dead. Just like whispers. I'm telling you right now. Because the first thing I was talking to my driver, Mike, today, because I yeah. told Mike, I said, you know, I was looking to get a house in Elmhurst. And I said, the only thing that, that kept me from getting a house in Elmhurst, it was right across the street from a, from a cemetery. Yeah. And I was like, it just kind of creeped Walking me out. Walking Dead. And then so Mike says, Oh, I would have liked that. There ain't nobody gonna bother you in the cemetery. I'm like, okay, so, but if we have a zombie uh, apocalypse, you know what what's gonna happen then? They all just they gonna come right to my house. And he's like, I said, you, you know, what do you, what would you do? Oh, there's no such thing in a zombie apocalypse. I said, so at least I know, Mike, if something if some zombies come, I come from watching Walking Dead, I would know that you have to stab him in the head. See, Mike would try to stab him in the body, and they bite his face off. See, but I watching Walking Dead. You know, you got to kill him. In, you got to hit him in the head. You got to stab him in the head in their little brain, their little mush brain. Stab him in the head. But see, people who don't watch The Walking Dead, when the zombie apocalypse come and you try to punch and you trying to stab him and beat him with a bat, and they they and they start biting your face off, you're gonna say, man, I should have watched Walking Dead. I'm a professional. You learn valuable lessons. Learn valuable yeah. lessons. Sure protect yourself. <laughs> Since you mentioned Mike, well, why don't you tell the folks how they can get the expert service at Windy City Limousine? Oh, okay. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. We got like a hundred papers here. I know. Oh, it's like, oh, this is what is this like a page seven? Oh, here we go. America. 
Windy City Limousine provides championship service. You listen to the sexy voice of Stacey King, by the way. Making a reservation oh. is so easy. It's a slam. That sounds creepy. Don't do that again. Oh, I will. <laughs> Let Windy City break the full court pressure and traffic and get you to your destination in style and on time. Oh. Contact... Okay, okay, this is getting kind of creepy. Contact us at 847-916-9300 or go to Windy City Limos. Dot nice. com and ask for Mike Amaral. He's the best driver out there. The guy is awesome. He's my personal driver. I don't know what I would do without this guy. He stopped at a taco place, cilantro today. Nice. And he was gonna buy me some tacos. I asked him if they had shrimp tacos. And uh, that location he went to didn't have shrimp tacos, but he was gonna get me some tacos. He always he always offers to get me some like rotisserie chicken. <laughs> he's always he's always taking care of me. So That's shout a personalized out to him. service. It's way personalized. to go, Mike. Way to go, Mike. That's my guy. Hey, uh, did you guys happen to check out uh, Tom Brady's new girlfriend? No. I Tom Brady's it. new girlfriend. Showed up at the game the other night. Wait a minute. Did he just get a divorce? Uh, right. Yeah. He's a free agent. You're not the only free agent. Hey, let me tell Sometimes you Sometimes when you're a free man, you have options. Do you know what her? I mean? Okay, let me just say some America. She's a gorgeous girl. Okay. You don't have better but, picks but, than that. But, hey, but crew. I'm a professional no better picks. analyst. Hey. Help, a, help a guy out. Let me tell you something. Oh, there we go. Let me tell you something, America. <laughs> I don't want to be, I'm not TMZ and I don't want to start a rumor, but this is way too soon. Okay. This is way too soon. Is it? No, seriously. This is, this is telling me that this was, this was uh, Tom. I love you. Okay. You're throwing some footballs around buddy. Cause this is, this is too soon. I, did you see the picture? Of I think his wife? Him finish that game. Did you see, no, no, no. Did you see, <laughs> did you see the picture? They have a picture of Antonio Brown in, uh, and it looks like his ex-wife in the picture. Oh no! Oh, dude, it was. Oh man, it's like Michael Jordan's kid with Scotty's oh, oh, ex-wife. Man, that's terrible. No. I'll tell you, listen, man. Oh, America, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Okay. Stacy's <laughs> reeling. What, what Relationships, is going, what, what man. Is, what is going on, man? Yeah. I mean, seriously, like you know that 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 doesn't even seem right. No, okay? it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. Okay, and 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 America, listen. Hey, to each his own. Whatever you feel you need to make yourself happy, or whatever you need to do to make yourself feel good. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. Okay. Hey, if you lose Giselle and what four or five hundred million in a week, that's a good rebound. No, nah, I'm telling you right now, I, I ain't gonna lie. I'd have held on to Giselle. I'd been like, she'd been like, "Hey, oh, I, need, I need you to go wash the dishes." All right, I'm gonna do it right now, honey. I need you to go pick up the kids. I'm gonna go do it right now, honey. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disrupt that apple cart, bro. You're crazy. She, she's a billionaire. Oh, look, 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 there it is, right there. Oh, There's no. the photo. Oh no. Oh no. You guys are crafty. Stacey King's you relationship advice. Hey, hey, listen. All I'm gonna tell you is, American. Listen, I'm a relationship guy. Right now, I'm in a lot of relationships. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing, America. I'm, a I'm just playing, America. I'm a, I'm a single man right now. I'm just. I'm enjoying life, man. I'm enjoying life in my apple cider. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about what we're watching this weekend. I'll be watching a lot of basketball. Windy City Bulls basketball and now arena. Will Purdue is going to join me. We're going to do a couple of games this weekend, Friday and Saturday. So they're they're doing a good job off to a nice start this season. So that's where I'll be. If you're at now arena, come down to the scores table, say hi to me and Big Will. And if you got Will's rookie card, he'll buy it from you for twenty five grand. <laughs> no, so, so if, you got, hey, if you got Will's <laughs> rookie card, just give it to him. He's not gonna pay you anything. He got, he got, no. Nah, we, we got a little T Rex arm. He ain't giving you nothing. That little pterodactyl, little, little. little. No, nah, no, nah, you ain't getting nothing for it. Yeah, Dale and Terry is expected to play for Windy City this weekend. So we'll get a look at the the Rook against some uh, G League competition. They're playing the Fort Wayne Mad Ants, and they're going to come in madder than ants. Fort Wayne <laughs> Mad Ants. That, that was one of their original CBA teams. Oh, was that right? That was one yeah. of the original. They just changed the name. It used to be uh, Steel uh, Fort City Wayne or something. something. How uh, was that bus ride to Fort Wayne? You know, I, don't, I, don't, I ain't going to lie, America. I love coaching, but the, those bus rides in yeah, certain places were not fun. Yeah. Like going to Yakima. Yeah, like oh. I didn't even know there was a Yakima. I yeah. didn't know. Yakima sounds like, you know, he's like you're sick. I'm like, I got Yakima. You didn't, you didn't take a bus from Rockford to no, Yakima? We, no, no. We flew, we flew to Seattle and we bust up to okay. Yakima. All right. And then you had to go through like, like the mountains and stuff to get to Yakima. And it's always yeah. snowing. And the bus had the little chains on the wheel, which in like a couple of times it felt like we were going to slide off the cliff. <laughs> I'm just like, and then, and then you get in those little bitty planes, those little yeah. prop dusters, yeah, yeah. you know. <sighs> Bamba. I love coaching. <laughs> I love coaching America back in the day. I learned a lot coaching. It's helped my broadcasting career. Broadcasting's a lot okay? better, it's yeah. It's helped my broadcasting <laughs> career. But some of the things, I mean, being in the CBA, you don't have all the, the coaches. You don't have all the training staff. You don't have it. I mean, there's been times I had to tape ankles. 
And I'm yeah. surprised some guys' ankles didn't break because I sure in the hell didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but I learned. I'm like, I'm learning. I just yeah. thought about Chip Schaefer. Okay, he took this tape here, went to yeah. my toes purple remember, stays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, had, I, I had some guys talking about their feet was hurting. I'm like, hey, yeah. man, I'm sorry. This is CBA. Yeah. You get what you pay for. Deal with it. You got nothing. You don't pay for anything. <laughs> that's what you get. Nothing. And you'll like it. Hey, we'd like to thank our special guest this week, Pooh Richardson. We enjoyed Pooh. our conversation with him. And again, our, our big Mama. news of the day, a brand new partnership with Odyssey 2400 Sports. You can always find us on the Odyssey app. And we're going to be uh, doing a lot of tie-ins with the score, 670 as well. So we're really excited about that, taking the show to a whole new level. Thanks to the talent and entertainment ability of one Stacey King. It's not a one-man show, America, okay? You know, just because, you know, like the Jackson 5, Michael's out in front, he needed the rest <laughs> of the Jacksons, okay? So I'm out in front, I'm Michael, I got Tito to my right, and I got... I can't even meet uh, Jermaine. I, you might, At least no. Jermaine could sing a little. Yeah, wow. you, yeah you have more talent yeah. Than, than Tito. Yeah, I, I can this hand is Tito over here. I can hand him a tissue. This is Jermaine, Jermaine right here, okay? <laughs> Tito, and then, we, tissue. and then we got Maddie, she's, she's uh, Janet. Yeah. And then we got over here, these are like the Jackson kids. These yeah. are all the Jackson kids right here. They Look at that any, cartoon they, show. They, they, they can't sing, yeah. but they're just there, okay? Yeah. Okay, so so this is a whole, this is a team effort, America. Right. Maddie Ice is over there. They, you know, he grew his hair back. That's nice. I'm glad to see that. <laughs> This this could not go on without everybody that works here. It's just not me. It's not Mark. It's not Tim. Um, you know these kids behind the scene. It came from Harper College. We, uh, you know, we we run a sweatshop here. Um, <laughs> you know, we just we just give them kids pizzas and concert tickets. You know, and uh, look at D right there. Yeah. He, you know, he's already asking for money. <laughs> just sit your butt down. You get nothing, and you'll like it. But these guys, these guys have really taken the show to the next level. They helped us. These guys have helped us go from just being audio to, you know, the visual, the YouTube. We were on Twitch earlier. Um, awesome team. They, they work their butts off. Um, you know, they're still in school, and uh, they make time to come every day, uh, every week to do this show. They no, constantly we work. It. They constantly work behind the scenes. And, you know, they we wouldn't – this show wouldn't be where it is without them and without you guys. And, uh, like I said, you know, I'm Michael. I'm out front. hee <laughs> And uh, the rest of you guys, man, the rest of you Jacksons, I'm taking you with me to the top, baby. Jacksons, we're going to the top. <laughs> and as uh, Deion Sanders always said, if you don't like it, the transfer portal is wide open. Damn, Mark, don't run off our people, okay, Mark? Mark, <laughs> don't listen to Mark, guys. Don't listen to Mark. We ain't going nowhere without you, baby. Oh, there you nah. go. Francisco, I need you to wear that tight shirt. That's it. That's your little thing. I need you to wear that tight T-shirt that you got in eighth grade gym class. I need you to start wearing that again. You starting to look too good now. I don't want you to look at this, man. Hey, look at, look at, look at, look at that. shadow box now. Look at, that's our crew right there. We we like to get our crew on here. Yeah, I retired go. those about um about two jokes ago. Yo, you know yeah, what? Two I, jokes I, ago. You know what? Hey, you know what? Your mom told you to retire. Don't say, no, don't yeah. act like you no, did it. No. Your mom said, "Honey, that shirt's getting a little tight. It's getting a little tight. It's time to it's time to put it up. You want me to put it in the glass case? No, yeah, think, mommy. Okay, no, all right. I, I, I'm 19 now, so I'm an adult. So hey, listen, I, I, no, that, that, that's what you say. It. That's what you say. Your mama don't say that. Don't act like you. I'm 19. I'm a man. He's I, in a glass oh, case yeah. of emotion. Yeah, yeah. yeah, once I leave here, that, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. Right once now. you leave here, you go down. I know what goes on in your house. All right, all right. So don't even try what to act like you. you mean? Don't act like you all that. You clean your room. Oh Lord, <laughs> we've had we've had many Zoom calls with him on there. We he tried to blur out his room so we won't see how dirty his room is. Yeah, he's typical 19 year old America. This is a sweatshop. Maddie is holding a sign that says wrap it up. I think that's a wonderful idea. Episode 110 of Give Me the Hot Sauce is in the books. I'm Thank telling you her so mother Kim. I'm talking to her mother Kim after the show. Listening and watching. We'll have a brand new episode next week. Stacy, you got some uh, advice for the folks on the way out? Keep showing up every week, America. That's right. This is the greatest podcast of all time. <laughs> and drive home safely. BB. Did you not get the memo? Derek Rose can go upstairs. Woo!